Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste. We carry forward our discussion on the Criminal Procedure Code and in this lecture we will have a look at the provisions relating to arrest and bail. Now arrest of persons is dealt with in chapter 5 of the CRPC. So what are the, the provisions relating to arrest? Section 41 says when police may arrest without warrant. Now in this case we are looking at arrest without warrant meaning that we are talking about cognizable offences. Any police officer may without an order from a magistrate and without a warrant arrest any person who commits in the presence of a police officer a cognizable offence. And we have seen before that cognizable offence is one where there may be an arrest without a warrant and there can also be investigation without order of the court. So if a person is committing a cognizable offence in the presence of a police officer, then the police officer may directly arrest the person or against whom a reasonable complaint has been made or credible information has been received or a reasonable suspicion exists that he has committed a cognizable offence punishable with imprisonment for a term which may be less than 7 years or which may extend to 7 years whether with or without fine if the following conditions are satisfied. So if it is not in the presence of the police officer, then the police officer can also arrest the person on the basis of a complaint or on the basis of an information or on the basis of a reasonable suspicion. But this can only be done if these conditions are satisfied. So what are these conditions? The police officer has reason to believe on the basis of such complaint, information or suspicion that such person has committed the said offence. So only if the police officer has the reason to believe that yes, it has been committed by this person, only then he will proceed to arrest the person. And the police officer is satisfied that such arrest is necessary to prevent such person from committing any further offence. So in this case, we are talking about the preventive actions. So to prevent the same person who, uh, who must have committed this offence from committing any further offence, then the police officer may arrest that person or for proper investigation of the offence or to prevent such person from causing the evidence of the offence to disappear or tampering with such evidence in any manner. So it is also a duty of the police officer to prevent the tampering of evidence or the disappearance of the evidence and to do that also the officer can arrest the person. To prevent such person from making any inducement, threat or promise to any person acquainted with the facts of the case so as to dissuade him from disclosing such facts to the court or to the police officer. That is if the person has a good chance of tampering with the witnesses then too the police officer will arrest the person. As unless such person is arrested, his presence in the court whenever required cannot be ensured. So the police officer is satisfied that if this person is not arrested, then it cannot be ensured that this person will be uh, present in the court. His presence cannot be ensured without an arrest. And the police officer shall record while making such arrest his reasons in writing. So while making the arrest, all these reasons have to be written down, they have to be recorded. Provided that a police officer shall, in all cases where the arrest of a person is not required under the provisions of this subsection, record the reasons in writing for not making the arrest. So whether the arrest is being made or not, the reasons have to be written down. Then clause BA says, against whom credible information has been received that he has committed a cognizable offence punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to more than 7 years, whether with or without fine or with death sentence 
and the police officer has reason to believe on the basis of that information that such person has, com has committed the said offence. So, in the previous clause, we were looking at those offences where the punishment is up to 7 years. But if it is more than 7 years, in that case, the police officer can directly go and arrest this person if the information is credible or who has been proclaimed as an offender either under this code or by order of the state government. So, in the case of a proclaimed offender, if the information is received, the police can directly go and arrest that person. In whose possession anything is found which may reasonably be suspected to be stolen property and who may reasonably be suspected of having committed an offence with reference to such thing. So, in the case of a person with whom stolen property has been found or a property which is suspected to be a stolen property, then the police can go and arrest that person. Or who obstructs a police officer while in the execution of his duty or who has escaped or attempts to escape from lawful custody, then to the police officer can arrest. Who is reasonably suspected of being a deserter from any of the armed forces of the union, that person can also be arrested. Who has been concerned in or against whom a reasonable complaint has been made or credible information has been received or a reasonable suspicion exists of his having been concerned in any act committed at any place out of India, which if committed in India would have been punishable as an offence and for which he is under any law relating to extradition or otherwise liable to be apprehended or detained in custody in India. So, even if the offence has been committed elsewhere not in India, then too the person may be arrested or who being a released convict commits a breach of any rule made under subsection 5 of section 356 or for whose arrest any requisition whether written or oral has been received from another police officer provided that the requisition specifies the person to be arrested. So, it should clearly mention this request should clearly mention who needs to be arrested, there should not be a confusion regarding that and the offence or other cause for which the arrest is to be made. That is the reason for this person to be arrested should also be there in the request and uh, it appears therefrom that the person might lawfully be arrested without a warrant by the officer who issued the requisition. So, if these three conditions are met, then even on the basis of a request from another police officer, a police officer can make the arrest. And subject to the provisions of section 42, no person concerned in a non-cognizable offence or against whom a complaint has been made or credible information has been received or reasonable suspicion exists of his having so concerned shall be arrested except under a warrant or order of a magistrate. So, apart from these cases, for any arrest, there has to be a warrant or an order of a magistrate. So, this section is clearly demarcating or distinguishing between cognizable offences and non-cognizable offences and even in the case of cognizable offences, it is saying that there are certain categories. In certain categories, the reasons have to be written down, in certain categories, the reasons are not required and so on. And if uh, a case does not fall under these uh, circumstances, then no arrest will be made except without a warrant or an order of a magistrate. Then section 41A talks about notice of appearance before police officer. So, in case an arrest is required, the police may also not do the arrest and just give a notice of appearance and in case the person is appearing before the police officer, the arrest may not be required there. The police officer shall in all cases where the arrest of a person is not required under the provisions of sus subsection 1 of section 41, issue a notice directing the person against whom a reasonable complaint has been made or credible information has been received or a reasonable suspicion exists that he has committed a cognizable offence to appear before him or at such place as may be specified in the notice. So, basically the police officer can ask the suspect to appear before him or, or at such other place as may be specified. So, the police officer can say that okay, 
you have been um, uh, it is a, 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 a reasonable complaint has been received or an information has been received or there is a suspicion that you have committed such and such things. So, you need to come to this police station at this time and if the person is coming then it may not be required to arrest that person. Where such a notice is issued to any person, it shall be the duty of that person to comply with the terms of the notice. So, if he has been asked to come, he has to come. Where such person complies and continues to comply with the notice. So, every time he is called, he is coming. He shall not be arrested in respect of the offence referred to in the notice unless for reasons to be recorded, the police officer is of the opinion that he ought to be arrested. So, if the person is uh, subjecting himself to the, these notices, then he shall not be arrested unless there is an exceptional circumstance. And where such person at any time fails to comply with the terms of the notice or is unwilling to identify himself, the police officer may subject to such orders as may have been passed by a competent court in this behalf, arrest him for the offence mentioned in the notice. So, if the person does not come at any time, then that person may be arrested. Then section 41b says procedure of arrest and duties of officer making arrest. How is the arrest to be made and what are the duties of the police officer who is making the arrest? Every police officer while making an arrest shall bear an accurate visible and clear identification of his name which will facilitate easy identification. Prepare a memorandum of arrest. So, with every arrest there has to be a memo of arrest which shall be attested by at least one witness who is a member of the family of the person arrested or a respectable member of the locality where the arrest is made. So, if there is no member of the family which is present or if they refuse to attest to it, if they refuse to sign, then it can also be signed by a respectable member of the locality where the arrest is made that this arrest was made before me and it shall be countersigned by the person arrested and inform the person arrested unless the memorandum is attested by a member of his family that he has a right to have a relative or a friend named by him to be informed of his arrest. So, it is not that if a person is arrested, then his friends or family are not uh, informed. If the memorandum has not been signed by um, a family member of the person, then the person has the right to have a relative or a friend named by him to be informed of his arrest. And this right has to be told to the person. It has to be informed to the person who is being arrested. Then control room at districts. The state government shall establish a police control room in every district and at state level. So, you need to have control rooms in every district and at the state level. The state government shall cause to be displayed on the notice board kept outside the control rooms at every district, the names and addresses of the persons arrested and the name and designation of the police officers who made the arrest. So, basically if somebody is not being found and if there is a suspicion that that person may have been arrested, then people should be able to go to these control rooms and check up the notice board whether this person was arrested and if yes, then who arrested that person. The control room at the police headquarters at the state level shall collect from time to time details about the persons arrested, nature of the offence with which they are charged and maintain a database for the information of the general public. So, there has to be a transparency in the whole process. Then section 41D says right of arrested person to meet an advocate of his choice during interrogation. When any person is arrested and interrogated by the police, he shall be entitled to meet an advocate of his choice during the interrogation, though not throughout the interrogation. So, during the interrogation, he has a right to have an advocate and seek his legal advice, but not throughout the investigation that is uh, uh, the interrogation, that is the advocate is not required to be present at all times. Then section 42 says arrest on refusal to give name and residence. When any person who in the presence of a police officer has committed or has been accused of committing a non-cognizable offence. Now, in the case of cognizable offence, the police would directly arrest that person. But if the person 
has committed or has been accused of committing a non cognizable offence, then the police would ask for his name and, ad and residence. If the person refuses on demand of such officer to give his name and residence or gives a name or residence which such officer has a reason to believe to be false, he may be arrested by such officer in order that his name or residence may be ascertained. So even in the case of non cognizable offences, the police should have an idea about who you are, where do you live. When the true name and residence of such person have been ascertained, he shall be released on his executing a bond with or without sureties to appear before a magistrate if so required. Provided that if such person is not resident in India, the bond shall be secured by a surety or sureties resident in India. Then should the true name and residence of such person not be ascertained within 24 hours from the time of arrest or should he fail to execute the bond or if so required to furnish sufficient sureties, he shall forthwith be forwarded to the nearest magistrate having jurisdiction. So the name and residence should be ascertained within 24 hours or a bond should be executed or sureties should be given. If not, then the case will be forwarded to the nearest magistrate having jurisdiction. Then arrest can not only be done by the police, it can also be done by private people. So this is also known as citizen arrest. So arrest by private person and procedure on such arrest, any private person may arrest or cause to be arrested any person who in his presence commits a non bailable and cognizable offence. So cognizable means normally it, there is um, an option of an arrest without warrant and investigation. Non bailable means that bail is not available as a matter of right. And if a person has committed this offence which is non bailable and cognizable or a proclaimed offender and without unnecessary delay shall make over or cause to be made over any person so arrested to a police officer or in the absence of a police officer take such person or cause him to be taken in custody to the nearest police station. So a private person can also make a citizen arrest of a person who has committed a non bailable and cognizable offence or is a proclaimed offender and then take that person to a police officer or the police station. If there is reason to believe that such person comes under the provisions of section 41, the police officer shall re-arrest him. And if there is reason to believe that he has committed a non-cognizable offence and he refuses on demand of a police officer to give his name and residence or gives a name or residence which such officer has reason to believe to be false, he shall be dealt with under the provisions of section 42. But if there is no sufficient reason to believe that he has committed any offence, he shall at once be released. So if there is a, a citizen arrest and the offender is brought to the police station or to a police officer, then there are three options. One, if the person is uh, found to be have committed a cognizable offence, then the police will re-arrest that person. If it is a non-cognizable offence and if the person is not giving his name and address, in that case he will be um, arrested and if there is uh, no such thing, then the person will be released. Then arrest can also be done by a magistrate. When any offence is committed in the presence of a magistrate, whether executive or judicial, within his local jurisdiction, he may himself arrest or order any person to arrest the offender and may thereupon sur subject to the provisions here in contained as to bail commit the offender to custody. And any magistrate, whether executive or judicial, may at any time arrest or direct the arrest in his presence within his local jurisdiction of any person for whom, uh, for whose arrest he is competent at the time and in the circumstances to issue a warrant. So who can arrest? The police officer can arrest, a citizen can arrest or a magistrate can arrest. Now section 45 says protection of members of armed forces from arrest notwithstanding anything contained in sections 41 to 44 both inclusive no member of the armed forces of the union shall be arrested for anything done or purported to be done by him in discharge of his official duties except after obtaining the consent of the central government so in the case of members of armed forces before the arrest you require the consent of the central government then how is the arrest made in making an arrest, the police officer or other person making the same shall actually touch or confine the body of the person to be arrested unless there be a submission 
to the custody by word or action. Meaning that how is an arrest made? And the, the CRPC says that the person who is making the arrest should touch the body of the offender and say you are under arrest. So, this touching of the body or confining the body is a requisite if not the person is submitting to the custody by word or action. That is, if the person submits by word, if the person submits by action, so that is if uh, the police officer ha is coming and saying that I have come to arrest you, the person says yes. So that is submission by word or the person just submits through his action. So, so his body language is showing that he is agreeing to the arrest. In that case, there is no need to touch or confine the body. But if these are not there, then the police officer has to touch or confine the body of the person to be arrested. Provided that where a woman is to be arrested, unless the circumstances indicate to the contrary, her submission to custody on an oral intimation of arrest shall be presumed. So, it shall be is must be presumed. And unless the circumstances otherwise require or unless the police officer is a female, the police officer shall not touch the person of the woman for making her arrest. That is, if a woman needs to be arrested, then either the police officer should be female or else just an oral intimation of, of arrest, uh, submission to the custody on an oral intimation shall be presumed and there is no need to touch the body of the female. If such person forcibly resists the endeavor to arrest him or attempts to evade the arrest, such police officer or other person may use all means necessary to effect the arrest. So, if the person is resisting or is trying to evade, is trying to run away, then there is the provision of using all necessary means to arrest that person. Given that nothing in this section gives the right to cause the death of a person who is not accused of an offence punishable with death or with imprisonment for life. So, if the offence is not punishable either with death or with imprisonment for life, in that case the police officer or the person making the arrest does not have the right to cause death of the person while making the arrest. And save in exceptional circumstances, no woman shall be arrested after sunset and before sunrise that is during the night hours and where such exceptional circumstances exist, the woman police officer shall by making a written report obtain the prior permission of the judicial magistrate of the first class within whose local jurisdiction the offence is committed or the arrest is to be made. So, there are special provisions for women offenders. Then search of the place entered by person sought to be arrested. If the offender has entered into a place, then that place can be searched to find out the offender. And if the ingress to such place cannot be obtained, that is if the officer or the person who is trying to make the arrest is not able to enter into the premises to make the search, then the police officer is also allowed to break open any outer or inner door or window of any house or place, whether that of the person to be arrested or of any other person. So, if the police officer is not getting access, then they can also break the doors and windows. Any police uh, provided that in case the apartment is in the actual occupancy of a female and who according to custom does not appear in public, then she will be given a, a chance to withdraw so that she does not come into the public and only then will the police officer break the apartment and enter it. Any police officer or other person authorized to make an arrest may break open any outer or inner door or window of any house or place in order to liberate himself or any other person who having lawfully entered for the purpose of making an arrest is detained therein. So, if the police officer has entered inside or the person who was making the arrest has entered inside and it was a lawful entry and then after entering the building, the doors and windows are closed so that the person gets detained. So, in that case, they are also authorized to break open the doors and windows. Pursuit of offenders into other jurisdictions, a police officer may for the purpose of arresting without warrant any person whom he is authorized to arrest, pursue such person into any place in India. So, the police officer can chase the offender 
anywhere in the country to arrest that person. Then section 49 says no unnecessary restraint. The person arrested shall not be subjected to more restraint than is necessary to prevent his escape. Now in this context you will find a difference between what is seen in movies and what actually the court sees. In the movies you will find that whenever an arrest is being made the person is handcuffed. But in this case what it is saying is that there should not be any unnecessary restraint. The person arrested shall not be subjected to more restraint than is necessary to prevent his escape. If the person has submitted to the custody, in that case there is no need to handcuff the person. And in this case, the Honorable Supreme Court of India has also given this judgment in Citizens for Democracy versus the State of Assam. We declare, direct and lay down as a rule that handcuffs or other fetters should not be forced on a prisoner, convicted or under trial, while lodged in a jail anywhere in the country or while transporting or in transit from one jail to another jail or from jail to court and back. The police and jail authorities on their own shall have no authority to direct the handcuffing of any inmate of a jail in the country or during transport from one jail to another or from jail to court and back. Where the police or jail authorities have been well grounded basis for drawing a strong inference that a particular prisoner is likely to jump jail or break out of the custody, then the said prisoner be produced before the magistrate concerned and a prayer for permission to handcuff the prisoner be made before the said magistrate. So if the police want to handcuff the prisoner while moving him from jail to jail or from jail to court and back, then they need to take permission from the magistrate. And say, save in rare cases of concrete proof regarding proneness of the prisoner to violence, his tendency to escape, his being so dangerous or desperate and the finding that no other practical way of forbidding escape is available, the magistrate may grant permission to handcuff the prisoner. So it's not the norm, it's the exception. In all the cases where a person arrested by police is produced before the magistrate and remand, judicial or non-judicial, is given by the magistrate, the, pers the person concerned shall not be handcuffed unless special orders in that respect are obtained from the magistrate at the time of the grant of the remand. When the police arrests a person in execution of a warrant of arrest obtained from a magistrate, the person so arrested shall not be handcuffed unless the police has so obtained orders from the magistrate for the handcuffing of the person to be so arrested. So even during the arrest, the same rule applies. No handcuffs till you have the permission. Where a person is arrested by the police without warrant, the police officer concerned may, if he is satisfied on the basis of the guidelines given by us in the para above, that it is necessary to handcuff such a person, he may do so till the time he is taken to the police station and thereafter his production before the magistrate. Further use of fetters thereafter can only be under the orders of the magistrate as already indicated by us. We direct all ranks of police and the prison authorities to meticulously obey the above mentioned directions. Any violation of any of the directions issued by us by any rank of police in the country or member of the jail establishment shall be summarily punishable under the Contempt of Courts Act apart from other penal consequences under law. So the Supreme Court has strictly said that handcuffs and fetters are not to be used till you have the permission of the magistrate. Then section 50 says person arrested to be informed of grounds of arrest and of right to bail. So during the arrest, the police officer has to inform the person why he is being arrested and that he has a right to bail or not. So where a police officer arrests without warrant any person other than a person accused of a non bailable offence, he shall inform the person arrested that he is entitled to be released on bail and he may arrange for sureties in this behalf. Then section 50A says obligation of person making arrest to inform about the arrest etc to a nominated person. So not only that person but also a nominated person has to be informed about the arrest. Every police officer or other person making any arrest under this code shall forthwith give the information regarding such arrest and place where the arrested person is being held to any of his friends, relatives or such other persons as may be disclosed or nominated by the arrested person 
for the purpose of giving such information. The police officer shall inform the arrested person of his rights under subsection 1 as soon as he is brought to the police station. An entry of the fact as to who has been informed of the arrest of such person shall be made in a book to be kept in the police station in such form as may be prescribed in this behalf by the state government. And it shall be the duty of the magistrate before whom such person is produced to satisfy himself that the requirements of subsection 2 and subsection 3 have been complied with in respect of such arrested person. So the magistrate has to check whether or not this information has been given or not. Then section 51 says search of arrested person. Whenever a person is arrested by a police officer under a warrant which does not provide for the taking of bail or under a warrant which provides for the taking of bail but the person arrested cannot furnish bail and whenever a person is arrested without warrant or by a private person under a warrant and cannot legally be admitted to bail or is unable to furnish bail. The officer making the arrest or when the arrest is made by a private person, the police officer to whom he makes over the person arrested may search such person and place in safe custody all articles other than necessary wearing apparel found upon him and where any article is seized from the arrested person, a receipt showing the articles taken in possession by the police officer shall be given to such person. So the offender after the arrest has to be searched and the items that are found on him other than the clothes that he is wearing have to be kept in a safe custody and there has to be a receipt made of what items were seized and it has to be given to that person. Whenever it is necessary to cause a female to be searched, the search shall be made by another female with strict regard to decency. Then section 52 says power to seize offensive weapons. The officer or other person making any arrest under this code may take from that from the person arrested any offensive weapons which he has about his person and shall deliver all weapons so taken to the court or officer before whom uh, before which or whom the officer or person making the arrest is required by this code to produce the person arrested. So the offensive weapons are also going to be seized from the person. Then examination of accused by medical practitioner at the request of police officer. So when a person is arrested on a charge of committing an offence of such nature and arrest to have been uh, committed under such circumstances that there are reasonable grounds for believing that an examination of his person will afford evidence as to the commission of the offence. It shall be lawful for a registered medical practitioner acting at the request of a police officer not below the rank of SI. And for any person acting in good faith in his aid and under his direction to make such examination of the person arrested as is reasonably necessary in order to ascertain the facts which may afford such evidence and to use such force as is reasonably necessary for that purpose. So basically if the police officer thinks that the examination of the accused by the medical practitioner is also going to give some evidence against this person then it is lawful to do this medical examination and whenever the person of a female is to be examined under this section the examination shall be made only by and under the supervision of a female registered medical practitioner. So there is adequate uh, provision for maintaining the decency. Examination of person accused of rape by medical practitioner here also the same thing happens. Then section 54 says examination of arrested person by medical officer. When any person is arrested, he shall be examined by a medical officer in the service of central or state government. And in case the medical officer is not available by a registered medical practitioner soon after the arrest is made. So every person has to be examined by a medical officer in the service of the central or the state government or if such medical officer is not available then a registered medical practitioner. Here also the provisions in respect of females apply and the medical officer or a registered medical practitioner so examining the arrested person shall prepare the record of such examination mentioning therein any injuries or mark of violence upon the person arrested and the approximate time when such injuries or marks 
may have been inflicted. So, uh, during this uh, examination, there has to be a record of what all injuries or marks of violence are there on the person arrested and approximately when were they inflicted. Where an examination is made under subsection 1, a copy of the report of such examination shall be furnished by the medical officer or RMP as the case may be to the arrested person or the person nominated by such arrested person. Then identification of per person arrested, where a person is arrested on a charge of committing an offence and his identification by any other person or persons is considered necessary for the purpose of investigation. Then the court having jurisdiction may on the request of the officer in charge of the police station direct the person so arrested to subject himself to identification by any person or persons in such manner as the court may deem fit. So, if the identification of the person is required before any other person then the court will permit or the court may permit if it deems it to be fit. Now, if the person identifying the arrested person is mentally or physically disabled, the identification process also has to be videographed. Then procedure when police officer deputes subordinate to arrest without warrant, when any officer in charge of a police station or any police officer making an investigation under chapter 12 requires any officer subordinate to him to arrest without a warrant, otherwise than in his presence, any person who may lawfully be arrested without a warrant, he shall deliver to the officer required to make the arrest an order in writing. So, if the police officer is asking another person, another police officer to make the arrest, then there should be an order in writing. And this order will specify the person to be arrested and the offence or other cause which, for which the arrest is to be made. And the officer so required, so the officer who has been given this power or has been deputed this power shall before making the arrest notify to the person to be arrested the substance of the order and if so required by such person shall show him the order. And nothing in subsection 1 shall affect the power of a police officer to arrest a person under section 41. So, if the police officer is deputing somebody else, then along with the order of this deputation, there also has to be things mentioned such as the name of the offender and the charges. And when this deputed officer goes to arrest the person, then he has to mention the charges to that person and shall also have to give uh, this order of deputation to that person if he wants it. Then section 55A talks about health and safety of arrested person. It shall be the duty of the person having the custody of an accused to take reasonable care of the health and safety of the accused. Person arrested to be taken before magistrate or officer in charge of police station. A police officer making an arrest without warrant shall without unnecessary delay and subject to the provisions herein contained as to bail take or send the person arrested before a magistrate having jurisdiction in the case or before the officer in charge of a police station. So, if a police officer has made an arrest then he has to without delay because uh, if this is an arrest without warrant then he has to without delay bring this person to a magistrate or to the police station. Person arrested not to be detained more than 24 hours. No police officer shall detain in custody a person arrested without warrant for a longer period than under all circumstances of the cases reasonable. And such period shall not in the absence of a special order of a magistrate under section 167 exceed 24 hours exclusive of the time necessary for the journey from the place of arrest to the magistrate's court. So, apart from this time that is necessary uh, for the journey from the place of arrest to the court, the total period of, of detention shall not exceed 24 hours, but it should be as short as possible. And if this period has to be exceeded, then a special order of the magistrate is required. Police to report apprehensions. So, any person who has been arrested has to be reported. So, officers in charge of police stations shall report to the district magistrate or if he so directs to the SDM, the cases of all persons arrested without warrant within the limits of their respective stations 
whether such persons have been admitted to bail or otherwise. Then discharge of person apprehended. No person who has been arrested by a police officer shall be discharged except on his own bond or on bail or under a special order of a magistrate. So if a person has been arrested, then that person can be discharged only on giving a bond or a bail or under order of a magistrate. Then power on escape to, uh, to pursue and retake. If the person is, has escaped or has been rescued, then it is lawful to again catch him. And while catching him, the provisions of section 47, that is entry into any uh, house or searching any premises, that also comes in. So if somebody has escaped, then that person has to be caught back. Section 60A says, arrest to be made strictly according to the code. No arrest shall be made except in accordance with the provisions of this code or any other law for the time being in force providing for arrest. So any arrest has to be made according to these provisions or any other provisions that have been made into law. Now in this context, we have the DK Basu guidelines which is uh, by the Supreme Court of India. So the Honorable Supreme Court of India in Sri DK Basu, Ashok K. Johari versus State of West Bengal and State of UP in 96 gave certain guidelines. We therefore consider it appropriate to issue the following requirements to be followed in all cases of arrest or detention till legal provisions are made in that behalf as preventive measures. So these have to be followed whether they are in CRPC or not because a few of them have been incorporated into the CRPC. The police personnel carrying out the arrest and handling the interrogation of the arrestee should bear accurate, visible and clear identification and name tags with their designations. So we have seen this, it's there in the CRPC. The particulars of all such police personnel who handle interrogation of the arrestee must be recorded in a register. That the police officer carrying out the arrest of the arrestee shall prepare a memo of arrest at the time of the arrest and such memo shall be attested by at least one witness who may be either a member of the family of the arrestee or a respectable person of the locality from where the arrest is made. So this provision is also there. It shall also be countersigned by the arrestee and shall contain the time and date of arrest. A person who has been arrested or detained and is being held in custody in a police station or interrogation center or other lockup shall be entitled to have one friend or relative or other person known to him or having interest in his welfare being informed as soon as practicable that he has been arrested and is being detained at the particular place unless the attesting witness of the memo of the arrest himself is, uh, is himself such a friend or a relative of the arrestee. So this provision again is there in the CRPC now. The time, place of arrest and venue of custody of an arrestee must be notified by the police where the next friend or relative of the arrestee lives outside the district or town through the legal aid organization in the district and the police station of the area concerned telegraphically within a period of 8 to 12 hours after the arrest. The person arrested must be made aware of his right to have someone informed of his arrest and detention as soon as he is put under arrest or is detained. So this provision again is now there in the CRPC. An entry must be made in the diary at the place of detention regarding the arrest of the person which shall also disclose the name of the next friend of the person who has been informed of the arrest and the names and particulars of the police officials in whose custody the RST is. The RST should, where he so requests, be also examined at the time of his arrest and major and minor injuries, if any present on his or her body, must be recorded at that time. So basically, this is providing evidence if the person who has been arrested later on says that the police used excessive force. The inspection memo must be signed both by the arrestee and the police officer effecting the arrest and its copy provided to the arrestee. The arrestee should be subjected to medical examination by trained doctor every 48 hours. So every two days, the arrestee has to be subjected to medical examination. During his detention in custody by a doctor or uh, the panel of approved doctors appointed by director health services of the concerned state or union territory. Director Health Services should prepare such a uh, panel for all tehsils in districts as well. 
copies of all documents including the memo of arrest referred to above should be sent to the ilaka magistrate for his record so this provision again is not there the ist may be permitted to meet his lawyer during interrogation though not throughout the interrogation so this provision also is there in crpc now a police control room should be provided at all district and state headquarters where information regarding the arrest and the place of custody of the rst shall be communicated by the officer causing the arrest within 12 hours of effecting the arrest and at the police control room it should be displayed on a conspicuous notice board failure to comply with the requirements herein above mentioned shall apart from rendering the concerned officer liable for departmental action also render uh, him liable to uh, be punished for contempt of court and the proceedings for contempt of court may be instituted in any high court of the country having territorial and uh, jurisdiction over the matter so in the case uh, of not following these regulations the official will have to suffer departmental action and will also be liable to contempt of court and these contempt of court proceedings for that you do not have to approach the supreme court they can be instituted in any high court of the country having territorial jurisdiction the requirements referred to above flow from articles 21 and 22 1 of the constitution and need to be strictly followed these would apply with equal force to the other governmental agencies also to which a reference has been made earlier these requirements are in addition to the constitutional and statutory safeguards and do not detract from various other directions given by the courts from time to time in connection with the safeguarding of the rights and dignity of the rest the requirements mentioned above shall be forwarded to the dgp and the home secretary of every state or union territory and it shall be their obligation to circulate the same to every police station under their charge and get the same notified at every police station at a conspicuous place it would also be useful and serve larger interest to broadcast the requirements on the all india radio besides being shown on the national network of doordarshan and by publishing and distributing pamphlets in the local language containing these requirements for information of the general public creating awareness about the rights of the rst would in our opinion be a step in the right direction to combat the evil of custodial crime and bring in transparency and accountability it is hoped that these requirements would help to curb if not totally eliminate the use of questionable methods during interrogation and investigation leading to custodial commission of crimes so the supreme court has been very clear that these guidelines have to be followed because be before these guidelines there were a large number of cases of custodial deaths custodial tortures during investigations and so the supreme court came up with these guidelines and said that these have to be followed and gave the responsibility to the dgp of every state and to the home secretary of every state that these have to be published widely they have to be uh, shown in every police station and so on now let's look at the provisions of bail and bonds as covered in chapter 33 of the crpc so it says in what cases bail to be taken when any person other than a person accused of a non bailable offence is arrested or detained without warrant by an officer in charge of a police station or appears or is brought before a court and is prepared at any time while in custody of such officer or at any stage of the proceeding before such court to give bail such person shall be released on bail so if a person has been arrested for a bailable offence and is ready to give bail then that person shall be released on bail so this section provides bail as a matter of right in the case of bailable offences provided that such officer or court if he or it thinks fit may and shall if such person is indignant Uh, indigent indigent means if the person is poor and is unable to furnish the bail and is unable to furnish surety instead of taking bail from such person discharge him on his executing a bond without sureties for his appearance as here and after provided so if the person is poor and is not able to provide this money for bail then this person may be discharged on a on a bond without surety explanation 
when where a person is unable to give bail within a week of the date of his arrest it shall be sufficient ground for the officer or the court to presume that he is an indigent person for the purpose of this proviso meaning that if the person has not been able to arrange money within a week then the officer or the court will presume that this person is poor and will release this person on a bond without surety and notwithstanding anything contained in subsection 1 where a person has failed to comply with the conditions of the bail bond as regards the time and place of attendance the court may refuse to release him on bail when on a subsequent occasion in the same case he appears before the court or is brought in custody and any such refusal shall be without prejudice to the powers of the court to call upon any person bound by such bond to pay the penalty thereof under section 446 meaning that if the person is not complying with the conditions of the bail then the court may say that now this person should be kept in custody then 436 a says maximum period for which an under trial prisoner can be detained so in case the offence is not punishable with death then if a person is under trial and one half of the maximum period of imprisonment has passed then he shall be released by the court on his personal bond with or without sureties because the uh, the trial is going on and on and 50% of the maximum imprisonment this person has already suffered then when bail may be taken in the case of non bailable offence it does a non bailable offence does not mean that bail may not be taken it just means that bail is not a matter of right but it can be afforded by the court when any person accused of or suspected of the commission of any non bailable offence is arrested or detained without warrant by an officer in charge of a police station or appears or is brought before a court other than the high court or court of session he may be released on bail but such person shall not be released if there appears reasonable grounds for believing that he is guilty of an offence punishable with death or imprisonment for life so in these cases the bail will not be given and such person shall not be so released if such offence is a cognizable offence and he had been previously convicted of an offence punishable with death imprisonment for life or imprisonment for 7 years or more or he had been previously convicted on two or more occasions of a cognizable offence punishable with imprisonment for 3 years or more but not less than 7 years so basically what is happening in these cases is that the court says that you do not do not need to keep everybody in custody you should keep as less people in custody as can be done so the minimum number of people should be kept in custody those people who are able to give bail can be Uh, can be allowed to go and only in certain cases where the uh, the offence is very big or the person has been previously convicted or it is believed that this person will run away or he will tamper with the evidence or things like that only in those circumstances should the person be kept in custody otherwise bail should be the norm it should not be the exception then 437 a says bail to require accused to appear before the next appellate court so before conclusion of the trial and before disposal of the appeal the court trying the offence or the appellate court as the case may be shall require the accused to execute bail bonds with sureties to appear before the higher court so the person is released on a bail to move to the higher court for appeal then 438a talks about direction for grant of bail to person apprehending arrest so this is basically an anticipatory bail if a person thinks that he is going to be arrested then he can go to the court beforehand and say that i am going i am ready to follow all your directions and so please give me an anticipatory bail so that as soon as i am arrested i am released on bail i don't do not have to be in custody and if the person has agreed the high court or the court of session may make this uh, direction and given anticipatory bail 
then there are special powers of high court or court of session regarding bail so the high court or court of session may direct that any person accused of an offense and in custody be released on bail if and if the offense is of the nature specified in subsection 3 of section 437 may impose any condition which it condition uh, which it considers necessary so the high court or the court of session may release any person on a bail if it considers it so and it may also impose certain conditions for it then a high court or a court of session may direct that any person who has been released on bail under this chapter be arrested and committed to custody so it can not only release on bail any person it can also say that cancel this bail and put this person in custody so this is a power of the high court or the court of session amount of bond and reduction thereof the amount of every bond executed under this chapter shall be fixed with due regards to the circumstances of the case and shall not be excessive so the amount of the bond should not be excessive and the high court or the court of session may direct that the bail required by a police officer or magistrate be reduced so if the bail amount is very high then the person can also approach the high court or the court of session and they may direct that the amount of the bail should be reduced then bond of accused and sureties if you do not have the money you can also go with a bond so a bond binds you in an arrangement that if you do not uh, follow these terms and conditions such and such amount of money has to be submitted now the bond may be made by the accused or it may be made by other persons who gives surety to the fact that if this person does not follow the conditions then you may take the money from us so that is a bond now section uh, 441a says declaration by sureties every person standing surety to an accused person for his release on bail shall make a declaration before the court as to the number of persons to whom he has stood surety including the accused giving therein all the relevant particulars so if there is one person who has already stood surety for n number of people and if all n number of people run away then this person might be might not be having sufficient amount of money to post the bail or the bond so in this case every person who is standing surety has also to inform the court about all the other persons for whom he has stood surety then discharge from custody as soon as the bond has been executed the person for whose appearance it has been executed shall be released then 443 power to order sufficient bail where when the first taken is insufficient so if the court uh, uh, considers that the uh, amount taken is insufficient then it may ask for an enhanced amount then discharge of sureties all or any sureties for the attendance and appearance of a person released on bail may at any time apply to a magistrate to discharge the bond either wholly or so far as it relates to the applicants so the person who has stood surety for an accused can also approach the court and say that i now no longer want to stand surety for this person and in that case the court will release uh, the the surety from the bond and will ask the accused to bring in some other surety if he is able to bring in some other surety and another bond is uh, uh, gets executed then it's fine otherwise the person will be put in custody so it's not that if you have signed a bond then you are bound with it forever you can also approach the court and say that now i no longer want to be in this position then deposit instead of recognizance so in place of bond the person may also submit money or government promissory notes then we have procedure when bond has been forfeited then we have cancellation of a bond and bail bond then we have procedure in case of insolvency or death of surety or when a bond is forfeited bond required from a minor appeals so in all these cases there is also a provision for appeals and then power to direct the levy of amount due on certain recognizances so basically this chapter details when a bail will be given when a bail will not be given what are the conditions to be imposed then who will stand surety what will be the amount what will happen in different circumstances and so on 
So the CRPC very clearly details about what an arrest is, how it is to be made, what a bail and bond is, how they are to be made. So that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.